Now, Tyler runs an amusement park. He's having a job interview with these three clowns. But only one of them is not dangerous. Can you help Tyler hire the right person? The first clown doesn't cast a shadow, so he's probably a ghost. And the third clown is stealing money from the second clown's pocket. So he's a thief. Therefore, Tyler should hire the second clown. Peter and Holly are having their first date in the amusement park. They decide to ride the Tunnel of Love. At some point, it gets pretty dark inside the tunnel. And after the ride, Peter finds out that his wallet is gone. Tyler calls the police and questions three customers from nearby swan boats. Bella says, I'm sorry, I filmed a video on my phone. I didn't look around. Tim says, no way, bro, my wallet is gone too. And Lisa replies, in the dark, I felt someone touching my bag. I pushed the attacker away. Can you spot the thief? It's Holly. Take a look at her bag. There are two wallets inside it. And here's one more in her pocket. Tyler receives a curious delivery. It has streets, but no pavement. It has cities, but no buildings. It has forests, but no trees. Also, it has rivers, yet no water. Can you guess what it is? It's a map. There are three bakeries in the park. Wendy has exactly $100 and she needs to buy 100 cupcakes. She must spend the money entirely. Also, Wendy must buy at least one cupcake from each bakery. The first shop is selling each cupcake at 5 cents. The second one is selling them at $1 and the third at $5. How many cupcakes should Wendy buy from each bakery? To fit the budget, Wendy should buy 80 cupcakes from the first shop, 1 cupcake from the second shop, and 19 cupcakes from the third shop. Brian decides to take a ride on the Ferris wheel. On his way up, someone suddenly throws ice cream right in his face. When the trip is over, he interviews three suspects. Zoe says, I don't eat ice cream, I'm on a sugar-free diet. Peter says, I didn't see anything, bro. I'm terrified of heights, so I kept my eyes closed the whole ride. And Fred says, sorry, I was streaming a video, so I didn't look around. Who is lying? Peter. If he's terribly afraid of heights, why would he ride the Ferris wheel? Brian is wandering around the park. Suddenly, someone approaches him from the back and grabs his phone. The thief is wearing a mask, so Brian can't see his face. The thief runs into a cafe and hides among the customers. Can you help Brian spot the criminal? It's this woman. She's hiding Brian's wallet in the menu. Tyler is walking down the street after a long work day. Suddenly, he pushes this lady. Can you guess why? Tyler saved her from getting hit by a car. Tyler keeps on walking and sees a group of ducks crossing the road. Can you count the exact number of ducks? Sixteen. Tyler enters a jewelry shop where his girlfriend, Mary, works as a saleswoman. Unfortunately, he finds her unconscious on the floor. He calls doctors immediately. They figure out that Mary was poisoned. Tyler questions three witnesses. The cleaning lady says, I was cleaning silver jewelry in the storage room. The guard said, 
I was having a lunch break outdoors and talking with my friend. And the boss says, I had a business meeting in another part of the city. Can you help Tyler figure out who poisoned Mary? Take a look at the hint that Mary left on the wall. It literally says that the boss did it. A few days later, Mary gets better and decides to prank Tyler. She brings three similar boxes to his house. There are two delicious cheesecakes in two boxes, and the remaining box contains dog food. Let's spin the boxes back and forth. Can you find the prank box now? Aha! The second one! Tyler gets an urgent call from his assistant. Someone painted graffiti at a vegan restaurant in his park. Tyler interrogates three employees. The cleaner says, I had an urgent call from my mother, so I went outside the restaurant to the backyard. When I returned, the graffiti was already there. The waitress says, I was taking an order. Suddenly, I looked out the window and saw a person in a black hoodie. He dropped a paint can and ran away. And the cook says, I was wearing my earphones and frying chicken wings in the kitchen, so I didn't notice anything suspicious. Who's lying? The cook. It's a vegan restaurant. Why would he fry chicken wings? After getting exposed, the cook pushes Tyler away and escapes from the restaurant. Tyler follows him. The cook hides in a carnival tent. He puts on a costume to blend in with the crowd. Can you help Tyler find him? There he is! It was raining heavily outside. So his shoes got wet. Tyler is walking around the park and spots four weird details. Can you see them too? This teddy bear has three ears. There's no July 34. There's pink ice cream inside the chocolate ice cream box. And this old lady is carrying a crocodile in a stroller. There are three fortune tellers working in the amusement park. Zelda, Salma, and Freya. One of them is an imposter. Can you decide who? Salma has an earphone in her ear, which probably means that someone is helping her when she tells fate. Later that night, Tyler finds Zelda lying unconscious at her workplace. There's a weird note in her hand. Tyler calls the doctors and the police. He also finds out that Zelda had only five customers that night. Alex, Rick, Emma, Rose, and Zoe. Can you figure out who's guilty? Rose. There's a tricky hint hidden in this note. Q plus 1 is R, N plus 1 is O, R plus 1 is S, and D plus 1 is E. Tyler spends all morning in his office. Then he leaves it for a couple of hours to have lunch with Mary. When Tyler gets back, he finds out that someone had robbed him. How? These six items are missing. Tyler is checking out these clowns' makeup before their performance. Can you spot the odd one out? It's this guy. He's the only one who has eyebrows. What about these houses? Can you find the odd one out? Yep, it's this one. 
Tyler receives four new tents. Unfortunately, one of them has a slightly different design. Can you spot which one? The second tent doesn't belong here. Tyler wants to improve the scary tunnel, so he gathers all actors playing ghosts and monsters for a brief team building. But there are real monsters and ghosts among Tyler's employees. Can you spot them? This guy is too transparent for a human. He's a ghost. And huge claws cut through this guy's sneakers, so he's probably a werewolf. Tyler wins a cute teddy bear for Mary. They get distracted for a second and then see that the toy is gone. They look around and find three suspects. Can you guess who is a thief? Although this lady is holding a similar teddy bear, it still has a different bow. This guy is carrying a box, and judging by his posture, it's hard for him to carry it. So it's probably really filled with heavy stuff. And the third guy's guitar is outside the bag. Which means he can be hiding the teddy bear inside the guitar case. Tyler throws an epic party at the amusement park. All guests are treated to free food and drinks. In the middle of the party, all the guests begin to fall asleep right on the dance floor. The next day, doctors check all the food and drinks from the party, and everything is perfectly fine. Can you guess what happened here? These balloons were filled with sleeping gas. In the middle of the party, they burst and made the guests fall asleep. Paul is a photojournalist for a local newspaper. It's his day off and he's hanging out at a party. Suddenly, a famous actress, Heather, enters the dance floor. Paul takes only one picture of her before his phone runs out of power. The next day, Paul shows this picture to his boss and gets a huge bonus. Can you guess why this picture is so exclusive? Heather is stealing money from this lady's pocket. Paul is looking at the office open space from the second floor. Suddenly, he spots a time traveler among his co-workers. Can you see this person too? This guy's outfit is too old-fashioned. Paul leaves his workplace to get some fresh air and eat. In a while, he returns and finds his boss unconscious on the floor. Oh. Paul calls doctors and questions three co-workers standing nearby. Rachel says, I entered his office 10 minutes ago to discuss my ideas, but he said he's been too busy and asked me to leave. Mm. Stan says, I don't know what happened here because it was my lunch break time. I was eating my hot dog outdoors. Mm. And Lily says, I think I saw some suspicious man in a black outfit entering his office. Hmm. Can you guess who's lying? Stan, he has an unpacked hot dog on his desk, so he was definitely doing something else during his lunch break. Paul arrives downtown to take some pictures. He's looking out the window of one of the buildings and sees this horrible scene. Why is he doing it? Do you have any ideas? This lady is a magician, so it's just a staging. Finally, Paul enters a spooky building where he's supposed to photograph. Suddenly, someone locks the door, and now Paul is trapped inside. He wanders around for a while and finds these four doors. A creepy voice announces, only door number five is the escape door. As for the other three doors, dangerous monsters are waiting behind them to eat anyone who dares to enter. Oh boy. Can you help Paul choose the right way? He 
should choose the first door. The symbols on the doors are actually numbers. Yeah. Paul enters the exam room and sees two more doors with spirals. Oh. The voice says, you should choose the spiral which consists of two separate parts. Hmm. The other door hides a magical portal leading to a black hole. Can you help Paul pick the right door? It's the second one. Paul opens the door and finds himself in a suspicious hall. He sees a metal door with a combination lock, but it's locked and requires a six number code. What would you suggest? The correct code is 375419. There's a hint hanging on the wall. Paul should literally enter three sevens, five fours, and one nine. In the next room, Paul meets a mad scientist, the one who had imprisoned him. He says, I'm gonna set you free if you crack my last riddle. So listen carefully. I have a head and a tail that will never meet. Having too many of me is always a treat. What am I? The correct answer is a coin. The scientist says, Okay, you can go now. There are three doors for you to choose from. Unfortunately, each door is hiding some danger. There's a tank with a hungry shark behind the first door. And there's a bunch of balloons filled with toxic gas behind the second door. And there's a giant cobra waiting behind the third door. Can you help Paul choose the safest option to escape? Paul should choose the second door. Toxic gas is inside the balloons, so if he passes by carefully without popping them, he'll escape safely. Yeah. Paul returns to his neighborhood. He's walking down the street and sees a tree with a bunch of birds. Can you spot an antisocial owl among them? This owl is looking away from the rest of the group. There are two houses with two single women living next to Paul. One of them used to live in poverty all her life, but today she robbed a bank. Can you spot this woman? The first lady is the robber. She spent unnecessary money on food, which is far more than one person needs. Paul is having a family meeting. He asks two of his sisters to sell an equal amount of homemade cookies. The cost of each cookie is one dollar. Paul tells them, you shouldn't eat the cookies that you're selling, and you should sell all the cookies. At the end of the day, all cookies are sold, yet neither sister gained nor lost a dollar. How is this possible? The first sister bought a cookie from the other one, and the second sister bought a cookie from the first one, and so on. In the evening, Paul is having a family dinner, but one of the guests is an imposter. Oh. Can you guess who? This gentleman is a ghost. He's levitating in the air. The next day, Paul arrives at his workplace and sees his co-worker standing near this mirror. Lily says, It's rumored that anyone who stood up in front of that mirror at 444 ended up disappearing forever. The guys decide to debunk that myth. Lily approaches the mirror at 444, but nothing happens. They laugh at the rumor and get back to business. After work, everyone goes home, but Lily stays for a little longer to finish her work. After doing that, she walks up to the mirror and disappears. The clock says 716. Why did it happen at the wrong time? The rumor was about the mirror time. 716 is the mirror image of 444. Paul wants to rescue Lily, so he goes to the most famous wicked witch in his town. The witch says, Okay, young man, 
I can get your friend out of the looking glass if you help me in the kitchen. Which one of these seven potion pots will get full first? Do you have any ideas? Outlets to the first and fifth pots are blocked at the initial point, so they won't fill. Nothing is connected to the sixth pot. The outlet under the second pot is also blocked in the end. Outlets to pots 3, 4, and 7 are blocked in the middle, so they won't fill. Therefore, no pot will ever fill. The witch is satisfied with Paul's answer. She shows him four doors and says, Your friend is behind one of these doors. You only have one chance to pick the right one. Good luck! Can you help Paul find Lily? There are flower symbols on each door. Paul should pick the door with a lily. Paul rescues Lily and the witch offers him to fulfill one wish. Paul goes home to ask advice from his family. His blind father wants to restore his sight. His sister wants a puppy and his mother wants to be super rich. Paul makes a wish and all three people get what they want. What was Paul's wish? Here's what Paul told the witch. My father wants to see our puppy digging in a pile of gold coins. Paul arrives at a luxury boat club to make a report. Four millionaires are talking about their boats. There are a total of eight boats, two in each color, red, green, blue, and yellow. Each millionaire owns two boats, but no millionaire has two boats of the same color. Alex doesn't have a yellow boat. Bob doesn't have a red boat, but he does have a green one. One of the millionaires has a yellow boat and a blue boat. And another millionaire has a green boat and a blue boat. Charles has a yellow boat. David has a blue boat, but he doesn't have a green one. Can you guess the colors of boats owned by each millionaire? Alex has a red and a green boat. Bob has one green boat and one blue boat. Charles has a yellow boat and a red one. And David has one blue and one yellow boat. A hat and scarf cost $110. The hat is $100 more expensive than the scarf. How much does the scarf cost? $5. It means that the hat is $105, which is exactly $100 more than the scarf. Mia was a shop assistant on a giant cruise liner. Once, she found an expensive watch in the boutique where she worked and announced it on the radio. Soon, four people showed up in the store. Each of them claimed it was their watch. Mia looked at all of them attentively and realized who the watch belonged to. Hmm. Can you figure it out too? This man does have a watch tan line, but it's much bigger than the watch Mia found. This young girl already has a watch on her left hand. Why would she wear the second one? Hmm. The elderly lady must be very absent-minded. Her dog is wearing her watch as a collar. The watch must belong to the teenager. (laughs) Nick was an experienced skydiver, but one day something went wrong. A strong gust of wind brought him to the forest. The man found himself among trees with no food or water. Soon, Nick saw four roads in front of him. One led to a super massive black hole that swallowed everything that got close. The second road ended in a sea full of sharks. The third road led to a mountain that was impossible to climb over. And the fourth road ended in a bottomless abyss. Which road should Nick take? He should follow the third road. No one says he has to climb over the mountain. He can simply go around it. During which month do people sleep the least? During February, 
It only has 28, maximum 29 days. A man is on the run from the police after he stole three massive gold bars, 30 pounds each. At some point, he reaches a long bridge that can support only 260 pounds. The man weighs 200 pounds. How can he transport all three gold bars in one go? He has to walk across the bridge while juggling the bars. It means that at any time, only two bars will be on the bridge since the third one will always be in the air. Look attentively at these three men carrying a log. One of them is cheating. Can you figure out who it is? It's the man in the middle. For one thing, he's wearing a suit which is a strange choice of clothing for such a task. Plus, his face is quite relaxed and his eyes are open. It doesn't look as if carrying the lug feels like hard work for him. One evening, Emma went to take out the trash from her coffee shop. She was about to leave when she spotted something dark in the corner behind the trash bins. It was a young woman and she was unconscious. Emma rushed to her. The girl's bag and smartphone were lying nearby on the ground. The first person on the contact list was named Big Sis. Emma called the number and heard a female voice. I found your sister lying on the ground. It seems someone hit her on the head. What? The woman was shocked and promised to come immediately. Next, Emma called the police. The sister and police officers arrived at the same time. Arrest this woman. She's behind the attack. Oh. And Emma pointed at the sister. Why did she say so? She didn't tell the sister where to come. How did she know the address? Oh. There are four cups on the counter, all of them upturned and hiding the same number of sweets underneath. Near each of the cups, there is a sign that says how many sweets are under it. The signs are 5 or 6, 7 or 8, 6 or 7, and 7 or 5. Only one of these signs is correct. How many sweets are there under each cup? Since only one sign is correct, the right number can't appear twice. Otherwise, more than one sign will be correct. It means that there are eight sweets under each cup. Luke took part in a scientific experiment, but something went terribly wrong. He ended up in a place where there was nothing but three portals. One of them led to a polar desert in Antarctica. The second one opened into a volcanic crater filled with molten lava. And behind the third portal, there was the age of dinosaurs, with huge diplodocuses roaming around. Which portal should the man choose? Luke would freeze in no time in a polar desert. Molten lava isn't even an option. But diplodocuses are totally harmless to people. They only eat plants. Look at the picture attentively and say which of these people is left-handed. It's the waiter. It's easier for a left-handed person to hold the tray in the right hand and deal with the food and drinks with the left, dominant hand. <laughs> Detective Henry Taylor was getting ready for work when he heard screams from his neighbor's house. He rushed there. The door was locked. The man had to kick it several times before it opened. He found his neighbor, Miss Anderson, in the living room. She was tied to a chair. Oh, I'm so happy you heard me shouting. An hour ago, a man knocked on my door and said he was an electrician. But as soon as I let him in, he tied me up and took all the priceless paintings I had got from my grandfather. And then he just ran away. Hmm. Detective Taylor had to arrest the woman for staging the theft. How did he know? When he tried to get into the house, the door was latched from the inside. Who could do it if Miss Anderson was tied up and the thief supposedly ran out of the house in a hurry? You have five pieces of chain, and each of them is made up of three links. You have to make a long chain out of these five pieces. Welding an open link will cost you $3, and breaking a link open is $1. Can you make a long chain if you have only $15?
First, take one piece of chain and break all of its three links open. It'll cost you $3. Then link the remaining four pieces of the chain with these open links. Welding these links will cost you another $9. In total, you'll only pay $12. In the middle of a long flight, two passengers stood up and started to threaten the crew and passengers. They demanded $1 million in a helicopter. One of the criminals had a pilot's license and could fly a copter. When the plane landed at the nearest airport, the passengers got everything they had requested a case full of money, and a helicopter. But when they got inside, they didn't manage to fly away and were captured by the police. Why couldn't they start the machine if the helicopter didn't have any technical problems? The helicopter was okay, but there was no fuel in its tank. Michael got lost when he was walking in the forest. After hours of wandering around, he finally saw a weird-looking house that seemed to be deserted. Still, the guy decided to try his luck and ask for directions. But when he entered the house, the door shut behind his back with a loud bang, and he heard a voice, You've entered my home uninvited. You won't leave it easily. Oh, no. After that, Michael found himself in a room with three doors. The voice told him that only one of those doors led to freedom. Behind the first door, there were starving wolves. The second door hid a furious werewolf. And behind the third door, there was a huge, raging campfire. Which door is safe? Michael should wait until the campfire goes out and get out of the house through the third door. Karen is at a corporate party. Her boss, Mia, brings a bunch of identical envelopes and says, I personally put the grand prize in one of these envelopes. It's a certificate for a trip to Bali. But no worries, the remaining envelope contains consolidation prizes prepared by our sponsors. Can you help Karen win the trip to Bali? There's a lipstick print on this envelope. Mia has a similar lip color. She said that she had personally packed only one envelope, so the grand prize should be here. The day of Karen's flight to Bali has finally come. She calls a taxi to the airport. Soon, three identical taxis arrive at her porch. Uh -oh. But only one of these drivers can actually give Karen a safe ride. Can you guess who? The second car has a flat tire. And the driver of the third taxi is a werewolf. Take a look at his claws. It's a full moon, so he'll turn into a wolf soon. Therefore, Karen should choose the first taxi. Karen's luggage is too heavy, so she goes to the cash register to pay for the excess. Oh no, her card holder is gone. Karen asks three people standing nearby, have you seen a pink card holder? The cleaner says, I found two lost wallets today, but none of them look like yours. The cashier says, I was busy with another customer, so I didn't look around. And another passenger says, Don't waste time, honey. Block your cards as soon as possible. Who stole the wallet? Nobody. Karen put it in the fold of her hat and forgot it there. See? On the plane, the steward asks Karen to switch seats with another passenger. Karen can choose one of these three seats. Can you help her figure out the best option? This man has very long legs, so he'll probably kick the back of Karen's chair all along. The second option is next to this elegant lady but she's stealing money from another passenger. Probably not the best company for a long hour flight. Although the third guy looks like a vampire, it's just a costume. He's sitting by the window, but the sun rays don't bother him. So he's the best option. Karen arrives at a fancy hotel in Bali. The manager shows her the three best bungalows uh -oh. to choose from, but only one of them is safe enough. Can you help Karen to make the best choice?
the first bungalow doesn't have a door, which makes Karen an easy target for robbers and mosquitoes. And there's a scorpion under the bed in the third bungalow, so she should choose the second one. On the beach, Karen meets three ladies who claim to be millionaires and show her pictures to prove it. But one of them is fake rich. Can you guess who? It's the first lady. She's just modeling for an electric toothbrush commercial. So her luxury is artificial. Karen is walking down the shore and sees a party. It's a beach wedding, so the bride and groom don't wear traditional costumes. Can you find the newlyweds among these people? Take a look at the cake. The letters say Harry plus Amy. This lady is wearing a necklace with the name Amy, so she's the bride. And now look at the flower garland around her neck. Only one person is wearing the identical garland, this guy, so he's probably the groom. Karen spots her former classmate, Tom, among the guests. He's talking to a strange lady. The lady is wearing a hoodie and standing with her back turned to Karen. So Karen can't see her face. Tom and the lady leave together and hide from everyone on the roof of the beach restaurant where the party takes place. Later that night, Karen also visits the roof. There's no one else here, but after checking the roof, Karen knows for sure which of these three ladies is Tom's secret girlfriend. How did she know? The third lady's dress is decorated with gold sequins. She lost one sequin on the roof. Tom sees Karen and invites her for a walk along the shore. She spots four weird things right away. Uh -oh. Can you see them too? A mermaid is hiding in the waves. This sandcastle has electric lighting. Tree branches flutter in the wind to the right, but the flags to the left. And finally, the moon has a creepy face. The next morning, Karen goes to the buffet breakfast. She wants to get a smoothie, but there's no information about the ingredients in English. Uh -oh. Unfortunately, Karen is allergic to strawberries. Can you figure out which smoothies are safe for her? It's all about the color. Only the green and yellow smoothies don't contain any strawberries for sure. Other options are risky. Karen enters a spa center. The manager asks her to wait for 15 minutes. Karen takes a seat and falls asleep. She wakes up after a while and finds out that someone had given her a heart-shaped tattoo. She questions three suspects. Bobby, the client, says, Lady, I've just arrived on my motorbike. If I see any crazy tattoo artists around here, I'll tell you. Leah says, I've been cleaning the bathroom within the last 30 minutes. And Tony, the massage therapist, says, Sorry, I was busy with my client, so I didn't look at you at all. Who's lying? Bobby, this motorbike has flat tires. And besides, it was already there when Karen entered the spa. Luckily, the tattoo was temporary and the massage therapist helped Karen to remove it, but he charged her $5 for his help. Karen arrived at the spa during happy hours when they offer a 45% discount on all services. So Karen paid only $12 for a one-hour massage. Also, she had a pedicure for $7. When Karen left, she found a $50 bill on the ground. How much money did Karen spend in total? Can you count? Karen spent a total of $24. As for this $50 bill, it's fake, so it doesn't make any difference. Karen brings her clothes to the local laundry owned by three sisters. 
She returns to pick up her stuff in five hours. Unfortunately, someone has burned her favorite dress with an iron. Karen gets furious and questions the sisters. Mia says, I didn't iron today, it must be Pia. Pia says, nah, I was planting roses in the garden all day, it must be Gia. And Gia says, I don't know who's guilty because I've been away all day. Who burned Karen's dress? It was Pia. Take a look at the garden. Can you see any roses? Exactly. Karen returns to her hotel room and uh -oh. finds a huge bouquet in a vase. The note says, Love, your secret admirer. Karen calls the reception to find out more. The manager says, One of the hotel's male guests ordered the flowers, but I can't reveal his name. Only three male guests stay in this hotel at the moment. Hans, Jacques, and Will. Karen meets them all at the beach and spots her secret admirer right away. Do you have any clue who it might be? Karen received pink lilies. Take a look at Hans's shirt. It has a print with pink lilies. He loves these flowers, but this doesn't prove anything. Will has a tan line from a wedding ring and he's taking pictures of his wife surfing. But Jacques is writing in the sand and his handwriting looks suspiciously similar to the love note. Spotted! Karen and Jacques go for a walk. He brings her to a pier with three boats. Jacques says, If you manage to guess where my boat is, I'm going to give it away to you. Can you help Karen find the right answer? Someone sleeping on the second boat, but this doesn't mean that the person is the owner. The third boat is called Jacques, but this name is quite popular. Let's take a closer look at the first boat. Can you see the red trousers on a hanger? They match perfectly with Jacques' jacket. Therefore, this is his boat. A rich lady booked into one of the best hotels in the city. When she got her key, she noticed that her bags had been stolen. Oh, no. The police interrogated three main suspects. Mr. Kramer said, I'm going to see my friends now. I've spent the day in my room. Mrs. Harrelson said, I wouldn't steal anything. I'm rich. Mr. Scott said, I've been walking my dog and have just returned. I know nothing about it. Who is the criminal? <sighs> Have you noticed the sign, no pets allowed, on the hotel door? This hotel has a no pets policy, so Mr. Scott couldn't walk his dog. They wouldn't have checked him in with one. Riley is studying abroad and has a boyfriend her family doesn't know about. Her parents don't approve of dating until she graduates. Riley spent the semester break with her boyfriend on his family's farm, but she told her parents that she had been in New York with her friends. When her mother asked for photos, Riley photoshopped herself into one of her friend's photos. When her mom saw the photos, she understood that Riley had lied. How? Look, Riley is the only person in the photo who doesn't have a reflection in the mirror behind. This is what gave her away. Mrs. Brown is the owner of an apartment building with a no pet policy. Not even fish are allowed. One night she hears a dog barking on the floor above her apartment. The next day she inspects two apartments upstairs. In which apartment does the dog live? Look, there is a dog leash hanging in this apartment. It must be the one. Even after the tenant with the dog had moved out, Mrs. Brown kept hearing some barking. She thought it was phantom noises, but a week later she decided to check two more apartments. Take a close look at them and try to figure out if a dog leaves one of them.
Yes, a dog lives in this apartment. Look, there is a dog hair all over the bed. Jane came home from school, looking forward to eating her favorite waffles she had prepared in this morning. Unfortunately, someone had eaten half of them. Furious, she questioned two people in the house. Her friend and her dad. Both of them were sitting at the kitchen table. Both denied having touched her food. Who lied? Her father lied. Look, there are waffle crumbs in his mustache. Alice participated in a game show, and she won three exclusive gifts. A Dolce & Gabbana wallet, a backpack from Dior, and a Tesla. But here is a catch. She is to pick her presents herself by choosing between the original and the replica. Can you help her pick the correct prizes? Here are two Dolce & Gabbana wallets. One of them is the original, and the other is a replica. Which one should Alice choose? This one, it has the correct logo, so it must be the original. Now look at these seemingly identical backpacks. Only one of them is the original Dior bag. Which one? This one, this logo is correct. And finally, the car. Let's see if you remember the Tesla logo. Yes, this is the one! Great job! Daniela graduated from FBA Academy Yay! and applied for a job at several secret agencies. She got an acceptance letter from one of them, but it didn't contain any instructions. In the end, there was a number. She tried to call it, but it turned out it didn't exist. Take a look at the acceptance letter. Can you help Daniela figure it out? It's a secret message, of course. And figuring it out is one of the tasks. Daniela should pay attention to the highlighted words. Then, from each of them, she should take the letter that corresponds with the number at the bottom of the page. If she does it, she'll see small lake at 11. Daniela got the job, and now she's on her first case. Amelia's cat was stolen, and she asked Daniela to find it. Daniela paid a visit to several neighbors and questioned them. Jake said, I have two dogs, I wouldn't steal a cat. Mike said, I don't like animals, so I'd never get a pet. And Jessica said, I'm not even allowed to have pets in this apartment. Who stole Amelia's cat? Have you noticed a cat house in Mike's apartment? Why does he have it if he doesn't like pets? He must be the catnapper. Another day, another crime. Daniela was following a shoplifter who had stolen an expensive purse from a Louis Vuitton store. Suddenly, the criminal entered the hospital and disappeared into the crowd. Daniela went inside. She saw three visitors. One of them must be the shoplifter pretending to be a patient. Can you tell who it is? It must be this woman. That young woman is pregnant, and this one is wearing high heels, so she wouldn't have been able to run fast. On Monday morning, a big sum of money went missing from the accountant's safe, and Daniela arrived to investigate. She had three suspects. John said, I was in my office all morning, because I needed to do some urgent work. Elizabeth said, I was drinking my morning coffee in the cafeteria and answering emails. And Julia said, I was in my office finishing some tasks I didn't have time to do yesterday. Who should be Daniela's main suspect?
Julia. She mentioned some tasks left from the day before, but it was Sunday. Danielle was spending her Sunday in a theme park when she heard two people arguing. It turned out they were arguing over the car keys left in the parks lost and found. Both were claiming them. Take a close look at them and decide who the keys really belong to. The guy is blind, so the car keys must belong to this woman. Danielle stayed in the park, and she had to crack some more cases that day. She needs your help, so have a look. Another lost and found item is this iPhone. Who do you think it belongs to? This girl's phone is in her pocket, so the iPhone most likely belongs to the other woman. And the last item is a Louis Vuitton purse. Two girls are claiming it. But who is the rightful owner? Look, the purse has a keychain with the name Ella. It's the name of the girl on the right. At least that's what her name tag says. So the purse must belong to her. Ned works in a club. His job is to check people's ID cards and not to let any suspicious people in. Take a look at these IDs and figure out who isn't supposed to enter the club. So here's the first one. What would you say about this man? Don't let him in. The man was born on the 3rd of February. But this date doesn't even exist. It must be a fake ID. Okay, here's the next candidate. What's your verdict? He seems fine. He can come in. Okay, here's the next guest. In or out? What do you think? She seems fine for me. Okay, next. Look, what is your decision regarding this one? Look, in the picture the woman has a birthmark on her cheek, but in reality she doesn't have any. That's suspicious. Don't let her in. Okay, another one for you. Look, the city isn't specified here, it just says Nevada. It's not what other IDs look like, so this one must be fake. I wouldn't let her in. And what about this girl? Would you let her in? She seems alright, green light. 